What's good with the YouTube? It's your boy Rojo with the Convicts Perspective. Just want to send mine to you guys first and foremost, man. I ask you to hit that like and subscribe for me. You know, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, the politics or lack thereof in two different kinds of yards the SNY yard, the sensitive needs yard, with all the new gangs, all the PCs, the, the weirdos, you know what I mean? versus the traditional general population yards. Now what we got, man, with with a general population yard, man, what you're going to have is it's going to be a lot like a, a government. You know, everything is in order. There's rules and regulations and understandings. You know what I mean? And things are pretty much going to go the same way each and every day. All right? There's a routine. There's a, there's a program. There's, you know, each group, man, they have their you know, representatives, the Northerns will have theirs, the Southerns will have theirs, the Whites will have theirs, and the Blacks may have a couple different ones based on what group they identify with. Now, with that in mind, on the S and Y yard, you got, you got groups too, you know what I mean? But they're way more loosely regulated, you know what I mean? So, Things are going to change every day on the SNY yard. Now, SNY yard, man, if you want to take off on somebody, you don't have to get at a channel who gets at his channel who might have to get at the, the, the jefe, right? What you're going to have is if you get mad and you want to take off on somebody outside of your particular race or group, you take off on them. You know, things like stealing, which will happen very, very rarely in a general population yard will occur on the mess and Y yards. Now bear in mind, I've never been to one, but I know a lot of people who have, you know, and a lot of people who spent considerable time there who I speak with. And uh, man, it's like comparing like a modern city to the wild, wild west pretty much, right? I don't want to be over dramatic or nothing like that, but <clears throat> you're, there's going to be extortion going on on these yards. There's going to be people rolling up on debts and Kind of all, all those kinds of things all the time you know there's going to be people messing with uh messing with other people in there if you know what i mean you know rah, 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 that funny stuff there's going to be all of that <sighs> there's going to be all kinds of things that, that happen in there that are forbidden you know what i mean like by who you associate with by your conduct man if you sleep all day if you want you know what i mean it's really really loosely monitored by each group you know you have groups and don't get me wrong they'll take off when the, when it's appropriate as as a unit kind of but a lot of the obligations there that are on the gp side with the gp groups they're not the same take being a northern for instance on a general population yard if you're a north daniel you're gonna have to get at somebody who's gonna get at somebody who gets at somebody you know it might go through three or four hands if you have an issue you know, with another person, another group, you know, things of that nature, it might take, it, it might have to go through word of mouth to three, four individuals before you have a response. On the SNY yard, you're going to do what you're going to do, and there's nobody really that's going to hold you accountable except the individual you do it to, you know. The politics and GP, <clears throat> they've been the same, essentially, since the four main groups established that place. These SNY yards are fairly new. These SNY gangs are fairly new. You know what I mean? They're they're very they're very loosely organized. You know, so whereas you might have, you know, I'm just going to use the Northern Riders as an example. This is no reflection of them as a group or nothing. But say you got 20 Northern Riders on a yard, maybe only 10 of them might be with it if something pops off. You know what I mean? Whereas if you're a Northerner or a Southerner, and your people get at you and say it's go time you're expected to go or we're going to deal with you period you know what i mean <clears throat> in gp in gp yards there's going to be a lot of respect you know people you know at shutdown time they're going to be quiet there's not going to be people yelling there's not going to be people talking smack 
There's not going to be people walking around looking extra hard at you. Your stuff's not going to get stolen, more than likely. You know what I mean? You're not going to be extorted, you know. There, there's, a, there's a sense of community on the GP yards that's just non-existent on the SNY yards, except amongst a certain few people and a certain few groups and a certain few independents. You got to bear in mind that there's a lot of former NFs and a lot of former MAs and ABs on these yards who are still going to conduct themselves similar to how they did, <clears throat> excuse me, previously in general population. You know, but uh, man, the SNY yards, they're, they're maniac yards, man. There's, you never know what to expect. Things change day to day. The routine varies. And there's, there's no general accountability for anybody's actions by anyone else. You know, you got, you got people in there getting hitting. You know what I mean? They don't got to share. You know what I mean? Then you got people who rob them people, like just strong arm, beat them up and take their stuff, just like Debo on the streets. You know, I've heard some stories from some people just recently. And, uh, man, there's there's dudes who would walk around and their hustle was beating up people and robbing them. Like, if you tried that on the main line, <laughs> man, you get you get massacred. If you just walked up somebody, beat them up and took their, their clavo, it'd be over for you. And GP, he just took his stuff, went back, or excuse me, in SNY, he just beat him up, take his stuff, go back, use it, start selling it. You know what I mean? In SNY, there's a lot more <clears throat> ability to make the canines a potential asset. There's a lot of dealings that go on with them. You know, a lot of cash changes hands and, and, and items are brought in, you know. Whereas, like, when you're, when you're running with the Northern car, you're not talking to the police, period. You know what I mean? Like, back in my time, it wasn't as bad as it is now. Like, nowadays, man, in some places, your celly has to read your mail. You know what I mean? I've heard you're not even allowed to file a 602, you know what I mean, in, in some spots. You know, so I don't know how, I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me, man, because you're fighting for your rights a lot of times in them 602s. So I don't know, you know, how accurate that is, but I know for sure it's going to get scrutinized fully. You know what I mean? And I, I've been places where they want you to bring somebody with you anytime you speak to a, a CO or a deputy or wherever you might be, a buddy system. You know, and I get that, you know. Um, but the thing with that is, if somebody wants out or somebody wants to tell, all those little preventative measures in the world aren't going to stop it. You know what I mean? So all that does is make you as an overbearing, you know, authority. You know what I mean? People are going to lock it up. There's nothing you can do to prevent it. People are going to tell. There's nothing you can do to prevent it. It happens, you know, somebody's, one of my homeboys, for example, he's fighting, uh, what did he, he's not fighting it, he's got it, he's got uh, s either 17 or 19 life without parole. No, excuse me, life with, he has life with, so he has an action at a date. He'd been down that whole first initial time, the 17 or the 19, and then just decided to walk away and tell everything. You know what I mean? So you never know when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. You know, there's there's ways these guys are going to do it. And, and this is what I'm getting at is the overbearingness uh, of the Northerners are what's causing a lot of the the Northerners and Nordanios, who are, whatever they call them nowadays, to leave the cause, you know. The, the excessive amounts of burpees, the excessive amounts of writing, and only the strong survive. I get that totally, and I was totally pro with that movement, you know, when I was active. You know, it's it's not a cause for the for the the, the weak. You know what I mean? You got to be headstrong. You got to be in shape. You got to be, you know, you got to be an elite person to function with the Northerners. But at the same time, that's what's driving a lot of them away. You know, they're going there and they're, you know, they're doing time. And then they're also being dictated by the commands of others that are a lot of times irrational. You know what I mean? So it's it's hard to be on GP. You know what I mean? It's it's hard. You know, you got to be prepared for stuff every single day. But if you go to SNY, you don't even know what to necessarily prepare for because it could kick off whenever by anybody for any reason with no no politicking necessarily just handling business you know um man i've heard of institutions man where 
man, some brothers had a pistol up in there, you know, by working with the police. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how are you going to be like, I'm going to go get off on that dude, and then he pulls out a banger on you in prison? You know what I mean? There was, man, the one advantage on the MSNY yards is their hustle, you know, because, like I said, they can interact with guards. You know, they're, they can freely speak with them, befriend them. You know, whereas on the main line, man, you start talking to the guards too much, something's going to happen to you. You know, you're going to be a suspect. But, man, the GP yards, man, like I said, I've only been there once, you know, to Susanville on the one yard and the three yard. And I got validated my first trip to the hole. And I've never been on an SNY yard. So a lot of my opinion is based on the opinions of others. Like, I'm an expert on ADSEG in the shoe you know what i mean I, I could break down all the different ones i've been to and i could make an hour-long video man but i don't have a lot of experience in gp because man i got validated when i was 19 years old and uh it's it's something else man that the life is crazy in gp like when i hear these stories about this s and y about all these different things that happen in there I'm just like, man, it's like, does it even pay to, to walk away from your original group and go there? You're going to have a worse time. You're not going to have no community. You're not, if people don't like you, nobody's going to look out for you. Like on the, in the general population, people look out for their homies. You know what I mean? If you're not eating, somebody makes sure you eat. If your hygiene isn't up to par, somebody makes sure you has co cosmetics. You know, you're not, nobody's obligated to do anything in the mess and wise, except what they want to do. You know, it's every man for themselves and. You know, the couple little groups that are real strong with their numbers, or they, they might be every man for their little particular group, but it's not institution-wide, like on GP. With GP, you're going to get a lot of people coming through that are with the business. You know, they're dead serious. There's no, there's no unprofessional behavior. It's just strictly gangster mentality. A lot of the people that go to these SNYs, they call them dropouts. They they're miscon they're, they don't understand what that word means. They've never been in in nothing. They're coming straight from county jails and stuff, talking about I'm not one of them guys. I want to go be one of these S and Y guys. So you're having a whole different mentality of people coming in there that don't have any historical training within any of these groups. You know what I mean? So man, you got some you got these typhy youngsters out there that they talk smack all day. You know what I mean? And they're gonna go in there. And run into like a real D.O. who, you know, he's still with the business. Don't think he's not. Just because he's not politicking no more. And there's going to be a lot of wrecks from things like that. Like the homie Gunner says, the Hoto generation. They're going to come in there and they're going to run into some real G's in there. Because there's there's more D.O. from every group than there is active. And that's just, that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Because you got years and years and years of buildup versus what's happening currently. So, it's just a it's just a, a wreck waiting to happen up in them places, man. I don't understand why why people just wrap it up and think I'm gonna go live better. Like, nah, you got to be on your toes there. Even in the main line, you 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 have an understanding of what's gonna happen at any given time. You know when there's tension. You know when it's about to kick off. Your people get at you. They tell you to be prepared. You know if hey, we're gonna move on these people today. And there, everything could be a surprise real fast. So anyway, man, that's just a quick breakdown. Basically, what I'm saying is the S and Y is complete chaos, man. You got all these different gangs that are fairly new. You know, they, they may or may not have down what it means to be a organization. You know, so there's going to be a lot of situations in there that have never happened before. You know, you're not going to be used to it. You might have done six, seven years on the main line. You go to SNY and think, all right, I can handle this, man. This is all PC and all DOs and weird people <laughs> for lack for words, I, lack of better words I can't say on here. But um, it ain't like that, man. It's The SNY yards are dangerous, like period. Everybody I know who's been done time, a lot of time on the main line and then went to SNY say the SNY yards are way more treacherous. And that's just because there's no ruling authority. You know, or, or, when you have a chain of command, you know, cooler heads prevail and intelligence and experience prevails. You know, when you got a bunch of Indians with no chief, 
man, there's going to be raiding, pillaging, you know, there's going to be a lot of messed up things that happen, you know, and that's just what it boils down to. I'm just, I'm just saying the politics in, in, in the, the general population, they're a little much, but the chaos in the SNY is way much. So it's like, it's two of the same thing. It, it all depends on, it all depends on you, you know, they're, they're messed up places. Prison's a messed up place. But if I had my choices based on experiences I have, I'd be in the GP. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mess with them things, man, because I don't, I don't like weird people. You know what I mean? And I like, I like to know what's going on. You know, and I don't even know if I'd be able to read one of them yards. I'd go out there and I'd be like, it would take me a minute. You know, and in prison you don't got a minute. It don't matter if you're an S and Y or GP. You know, you got to be aware of your surroundings. You got to be able to get a firm grasp on what's going on, or you could come up short. But this is basically to all you guys who think, you know, the the S and Y gangs are are weak and S and Y people are soft. I get I get what you're saying about that. You know, I, I feel you 100. percent But you can't go you you can't go to any S and Y yard and think that you're just gonna run stuff and people are gonna be like intimidated by you, because man, that'll get you messed up. You know, it's happened a lot of times, man, where people thought man, I'm, I'm just not going to be active and I'm going to go over here. There, man, there's a lot of people who wish they wouldn't have made that choice. But the thing is, man, one place is very, very organized, respectful. You know what's going on. The other place, it's like, man, if you lived in, in Carson City your whole life and then you just got dropped off in Compton, it's it's going to be a total shock to you. You ain't going to know what's going on. And that's that. I ramble. But I have fun telling this story, though. It's your boy Rojo, Convict Perspective. Have a good day.